Hey guys, Chris here and welcome to a brand new segment on the channel I'm calling Cabin Tech and Features Review where we dive deep into, well, the cabin tech and some of the interior features of a car I'm testing. I feel that I have enough, you know, things to cover in my other video formats, you know, the charging test, the uh, range test, my reviews that I don't have, you know, enough room in those videos to cover the cabin tech and also some of the features that I want to do without making those videos too long and too off topic. So that's why I'm starting this brand new format of video where, well, we dive deeper into cabin tech and some of the interior features I find cool and worthy to show you guys. So if you like this type of content, if you like this new video format, please let me know by clicking that like button down below. Stepping into the ID3, you don't actually have to press a start button or an ignition button. You just sit down in the seat, you put your foot on the brake, and then the ignition turns on, which is very cool and it feels very intuitive. But you do have a starter button here on the steering wheel column that you can turn on and off the ignition. Let's see if you can put my hand between there. So you can turn it on and off, and if you put your foot on a brake again, it will start up. So that is pretty, pretty cool. And look at this, guys. Somebody in Wolfsburg has a sense of humor. The brake pedal is the pause button, and the throttle pedal is the play button. I think that is pretty, pretty cool. And kind of fun. Volkswagen usually is quite a serious company, so it's cool that they have, you know, implemented some fun features here in the ID3. Okay, so behind the driver or behind the steering wheel rather, in front of the driver you have this 5.3 inch digital driver's display which is clear, it's bright, it's small, so it doesn't take up any of your, you know, uh, forward visibility. And it is super clear, you know, look at those black levels. I mean, this is one of the nicest and highest quality screens in any car, along with also the uh, 10 inch infotainment system. And then you also have a button here to change the view. So you can you either press and then you can hear that sound it makes. I don't know if you can turn that off, but I mean, I don't mind it too much. But what I do mind is the haptic feedback, the the capacitive buttons here I'm not a huge fan of. I find the operation kind of counterintuitive and I mean it looks very pretty though being glossy black plastics it's yeah prone to fingerprints and you know other things like scratches and I don't know if you can see it here but the bottom of the screen here is full of scratches so I mean that glossy black plastic is prone to damage. But I mean, you can control the screen here and the screen is super clear. I'm a huge fan of this screen. And you can see on the right side here, you have the gear selector, you can see there. And the way this works is that you, you, you know, you rotate forwards to put it into drive and then you can go one more time to put it into B, which is your brake regenerative mode. And then you have reverse here by rotating it the other way. You also have a 360 camera, no, not a 360, a reversing camera here, which is quite clear. And then you have parking sensors on the side there. I mean, this is a really nice backup camera. And then you have park here on the outside, pressing that. So really nice, you know, satisfying click. I mean, the switch gear in this car is, is, is pretty nice, pretty nice quality. And I mean, this clicking sound. Yeah, this is the way only Germans do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So to sum up here, not a huge fan of neither the controls of, you know, the uh, here you have the radar guided cruise control. I don't find it intuitive. So you have your on and off button up here and then you have your set button there and then you have your distance uh, increase and no, your speed is here increase and decrease your speed and then you also you reset and then you have your distance on the radar guided cruise control so I mean the button layout isn't anything to complain about but it's just in practice I just find it a bit confusing to use I don't know why and then you also have the volume and uh, you know the audio controls here on this side and here you have your volume up and down and then you have your track forwards and backwards, which again, in my opinion, it should be volume up and down and then uh, track forwards and backwards. I don't know why they have done it that way. Is this a Volkswagen thing? I haven't owned a Volkswagen in five or six years. 
and I really don't remember my Tiguan being uh, this confusing. So, I mean, it's just counterintuitive according uh, compared to every other car out there. And then you have a voice command button up here, which is kind of useless. And... Yeah, so... I wasn't... I didn't even touch that. So, what is it doing now? Oh, Brit. Oh, Brit. Yeah, so we have to X that out. I wasn't... I wasn't even close to that. Is this, like... I'm, I'm not touching it. This is so weird. Why did it activate the, the voice commands there? Okay, so on the left side here, you have buttons here. These are also capacitive buttons for the... Uh, yeah, the lights, and then you have the window switch down here, which is also kind of controversial because you can see here you only have two buttons. You have one for the left side and one for the right side, and then you have to press this to control the rear windows. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of gimmicky. I don't think it would cost them any more money to produce two more buttons. Really, guys, I mean, this is a piece of plastic. This can't cost that much. It's kind of gimmicky, uh, kind of. I mean, you don't use the rear windows that much, so I don't mind it, but I mean, like, what's wrong with just having four buttons? So, I mean, that's kind of weird. So your stocks are kind of traditional. They work nicely. They are the opposite way of, of Audis, uh, but that's, I guess, the way Volkswagen do it. And then you have the central display here, which is 10.0 uh, inches. And you can see here what this car is missing, which annoys the heck out of me. And that is a volume knob, a rotating knob to control the volume. This car doesn't have that. And I find that super annoying for me. That is almost a deal breaker. You do have this, I mean, these buttons here, which, and also it's a slider. So you can slide it up and down uh, or you can press it and now it's not working. I don't know why. Look at that. Is, is it because we don't have any audio? So if I go to Apple CarPlay there. Okay, let's connect to our Apple CarPlay and see if it's just me. Okay, we're not going to play too much of a song because we will get a copyright strike. Or we can go to, yeah, let's just press play here. I mean, it, it works kind of okay. It's kind of laggy, as you can see. And, you know, you can slide it or you can, you know, just tap. It's okay, but I wish we had, you know, just a knob to rotate. It's... I mean, that's so much better. And then you also have your audio controls. Now your, your, your HVAC controls here, your, your temperature up and down, which is are also touch capacitive buttons. So all of these buttons here are touch capacitive, everything on the front here. And sometimes you, you hit like there, I'm hitting the red side, but it's actually turning the temperature down, even though I'm on the right side of this uh, temperature icon here. So, I mean, you can also slide it, but you also have a much smaller piece of real estate here. And what I don't like is that you can see that it dims the whole screen while giving you the temperature. So if you just hit this you're and you're on the road, your eyes automatically move to the right to, to look at the screen because the whole screen just dimmed down. So, I mean, I kind of find that distracting. I'm not a huge fan of that. And then on the front here, you do have a uh, shortcut to your your parking sensors and also your backup camera, which is, of course, recommendable. And then you also have your climate controls here, which, I mean, the menu, the layout is very nice. It's very easy. It's very simple. It's very intuitive. You have your heated seats. You have your heated steering wheel. You also have all your controls. You have smart climate, uh, which, uh, you know, does different things. I haven't, you know, even looked at this. But what it does, it's, uh, I think there's also a sensor uh, in the passenger seat, of course, you know, that detects if somebody's sitting there and it will put it into eco mode if you're only one person in the car. And I find the temperature in this car very comfortable. You know, some cars 
um, especially when they have you know this one driver mode will give you very cold a very cold cabin even though you have like 21 or 22 degrees in this car I don't find the need to you know crank up the temperature to anything above 21 or 22 also your hazards here and then you also have your assists here your driver assist and if we close that your driver assists you have your you have your driver assist no so okay so what was up with that why was that so laggy and this is also kind of annoying so you hit your assist buttons and every other car would you know give you your options and look how laggy that is but here no you have to press this button up here again and it's all the way on to the right side and then you can do all your you know your uh, settings here but I just want to hit one button and then just press or oh, maybe if you go into the menu okay so but yeah every time you reset the car it you have to press over there and then you have your modes here your drive modes um, your eco your comfort your sport your individual I haven't felt any you know noticeable difference between any of them and yeah what what's what's going on and what is also a bit weird, so as you guys may have noticed, I'm not a huge fan of this setup. As I said, you know, not having a volume knob is kind of a deal breaker. I'm not a huge fan of the button layouts here and also it being capacitive touch buttons. I mean, it looks pretty, but it's just not very easy to use in practice. And also here, so you have all of these buttons, but your home button is on the screen there which is also kind of counterintuitive. Why didn't you just put, it, it would be much more intuitive to put a home button down here, like right down there. Um, but other than that, the screen is super nice and super leg legible. I mean, it's it's so high quality. The black levels are amazing. The, 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 the brightness and also the colors. It's one of the nicest and prettiest screens I have seen in a long time. And then you have here, so if you swipe to the left again, you have your car settings. And look how laggy it is. Um, you'll have it there. And then you have Apple CarPlay is actually buried in here, which isn't very intuitive. It actually took me a few days because I thought this car had uh, to have, you know, your phone connected via cable to have Apple CarPlay. But then I read it actually does it wirelessly, but you had to click this and then you had to choose. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's not, it's, oh, come on, look at that, so annoying. But it's not on your main screen here, right? Oh yeah, gesture controls, sorry. Yeah, so it has gesture controls, which is kind of gimmicky. And it has that sound, yeah, okay, so you have your normal uh, <laughs> settings here. But then you have your navigation screen here. And you know, this screen looks kind of nice and pretty if it was your home screen, but it's not your home screen because that is your home screen. Or is it your home screen? I mean, I'm not sure. Is it your home screen? Maybe both of these screens are your home screen. So it's, it's not the most intuitive system, guys. And I don't mean to complain. I don't mean to nag, but I just want to show you guys after using this system for three or four days, I'm. I'm, I'm not in love with it. And if you navigate to somewhere, it won't actually show you any information when you are in this screen. You can get some information up here by, you know, switching views. But here it won't actually show you anything. So I'm going to click in there and then I'm going to just set a... So let's just put Circle K. Yeah. So when we go there, it will show you, you know where to drive and then in the meantime yeah start okay let's start in the meantime yeah it will show you here so this is pretty nice it will show you and you can also make that even bigger so I, I'm a huge fan of this but if I go out here it actually won't show you any much any you know useful information it won't show you you know your arrival your distance or anything you have to go in here so I mean it's kind of useless in that sense um, and then you have your car settings here. So everything is kind of fiddly. So up here you have your state of charge uh, on this screen. And then if you go down here, you have your consumption. So I, I w w wish that 
you know, it would be nicer if they put the state of charge wheel on your screen here or anywhere else, but maybe next to your, your, your driver data, your consumption, your, your, you know, the time, your distance, your average speed, um, it would be much more intuitive to put your state of charge there. And then you have car settings here on the outside and on the inside. So, I mean, it all looks kind of fancy, but it's not the easiest to use. And then you have status here, which is the mileage of the car. Mm, okay. And then your, yeah, so it looks very, but the way they made it, it's, it's like, it looks pretty, but it's not the easiest system to, to use. And especially dr ju jumping in between screens. So if you're in the navigation and you want to, you know, check your consumption, okay. And then you want to go to your navigation. You don't have any short buttons down here, shortcut buttons. You have to press that and then you have to go in there. And then if you want to go out again, you have to press this and then you have to press this and then, well, I want to check my state of charge. So it's so many button presses. It's so many button presses. And then you have also this screen here, which of course is a, a shortcut screen. So you could, you know, use that instead, but okay. So yeah, I didn't mean to do that. I was swiping. I want to swipe. So if you're here, you still have to press once, twice, and then three times and then four times. So it really doesn't matter what way you go. There are a whole bunch of button settings. And then you also have your car play there, which is kind of nice. I didn't actually know that you had the shortcut there because I haven't actually been, been using it uh, that much, but yeah. So, I mean, that is the infotainment system. It looks very pretty. You have your clock up there. You have your outside temperature, but you don't have, you know, state of charge, uh, easily, uh, uh, readily uh, available. Uh, it will, you know, show up here on the bottom part of the screen when you're under 10% state of charge. But yeah, I wish they, you know, it's not quite finished the software here and you being limited to not having, you know, shortcuts or any physical buttons makes it a bit, a bit harder. And then you have, you know, their central storage here. You have this net there. It's kind of nice cup holders there. I mean, the whole cabin feels very airy. And then you have your wireless charging pad here. Okay, so I have my phone and it actually doesn't charge my phone. And I've tried to remove the, the cover. I've tried to reset my phone, but no, no life at all. And then you also have two USB-C ports here. And yeah, you have two USB-C ports for the rear seat also. So, I mean, I think that's it. That is the cabin tech. There isn't too much else I want to show you other than, you know, annoying black plastic, black, uh, glossy black plastics everywhere, which just scratch easily and don't look pretty. You can also see these hard touch plastics here also scratch really easily. Look at that. I mean, this car is basically brand new. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That was the first video in the new format, the new series called cabin tech and interior features review. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. I mean, it's probably not as polished as it could be or is going to be in the future. I'm kind of learning while, you know, going forward with this video format. So if there's anything you guys think I missed out, uh, or didn't cover, please let me know in the comment section down below. There is one thing that I thought about now is, is the audio system is uh, quite decent in this car. And you know, a lot of cars get their basic sound systems quite decent nowadays, but where, you know, the big difference between this system here and something like a high-end system in an Audi is that uh, this really starts to fall apart when you go loud and many of these systems don't go that loud. And also, you know, the bass, it's, they offer a, a lot of bass, but it's kind of muddy and boomy, but I mean, quite decent for being a standard sound system, no brand sound system. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content, as always guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.